Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Madam Rajavi uh, just spoke so eloquently about the legacy of what brings us here today. She talked about what brings us to Geneva, the legacy of human rights, the legacy of protecting refugees. In a sense, we are all heirs to that legacy if we believe that there is an alternative to violence. Today in the world, the international community thinks that the only final option to the intransigence of the Iranian mullahs to suspend their nuclear ambitions is a military option. Today, in Geneva, we commit ourselves to a different option. We commit ourselves to a nonviolent option, a political option, and that is to recognize and support the main Iranian resistance to the mullahs in Tehran, the PMOI and the MEK, as the legitimate future. There are seven new martyrs on the wall added to the numbers that have been killed and injured before, whether it was July of 2009 or April of 2011, as Madam Rajabi said, these new seven martyrs join in the legacy of those who laid down their lives to bring about a free Iran. Today, we have to commit ourselves to making sure that they did not lose their lives in vain. Today, we must commit ourselves to making sure that no more lives are lost in Camp Liberty or Camp Ashraf. And as Madam Rajavi said, this is an issue of security. But let us understand how we got here. Because it wasn't something that this organization and many of us did not warn would happen. If we had paid attention to the lies of those who said initially that liberty was a humanitarian camp. Well, we know today that that was a lie because we saw conflicting memos from those in the UN saying that the conditions in liberty were deplorable and unfit for humanitarian concerns. But Martin Kobler said that liberty was okay for resettlement. Martin Kobler lied about the humanitarian conditions in liberty. Next, we saw the, the promise of resettlement rapid resettlement for the asylum seekers 
who were to move to liberty in order to be resettled. Again, we saw Martin Kobler lie about the rapid resettlement of those in Camp Liberty. And finally, we heard that Camp Liberty was safe and secure when all of your family members told us and showed us where this was not true. But Martin Kobler said that it was true and that they would be safe. Martin Kobler lied again about the safety of Camp Liberty. So, if we today are to be sure that these new seven martyrs and those that were killed before did not die in vain, then we must be honest about what has been going on and the lies that have been perpetrated by the United Nations representative in charge of Camp Liberty. That is what we are here today to focus on because of the integrity of the United Nations and the credibility of the United Nations is not beyond reproach, then it is not worth what they stand for to say that they are a, an agency that holds the highest standards for the protection of human rights and refugees while one of their own representatives continues to lie about the protection, safety, and humanitarian conditions of that camp that has been the place where all of the asylum seekers have been kept. So what do we have to do today? We have to call on all of those of good conscience at the United Nations to say, is Martin Kobler worthy of the name a UN commissioner when it comes to the protection and safety of the people in Camp Liberty? Is Martin Kobler worthy of being trusted again is Martin Kobler worthy of promising the protection, safety, and resettlement of the people of Camp Liberty? No, he is not. And the UN must say so, and say so aggressively. Martin Kobler must go. So as Madam Rajavi said so powerfully, we can give speeches today, but tonight the people at Camp Liberty are worrying about their lives. We need answers. We need action. We don't need more words. We need results. The UN in Geneva must rapidly change this situation if they want their integrity intact. They must move those that are entrapped in Camp Liberty quickly back to Ashraf where they can be secured in a place with the kind of protective buildings that are suitable to save lives and protect lives. Number one, the UN must move people right away today to Camp Ashraf. And the United, Na the United Nations and the United States must be clear that any inaction from here on out 
can unmistakably be seen as complicity, complicity with any future lives lost, because we warned the United States State Department, we warned the United Nations that these ta attacks were inevitable, and they happened not once, not twice, but three times there were attacks on the people who were defenseless, unarmed, protected people, according to the Fourth Geneva Convention. This is not allowed to stand if we care about the charters of the United Nations and what they stand for. This cannot be permitted to continue. And finally, we need to have an accountability to those that have called for an investigation. I saw that Martin Kobler called on Iraq, Iraq and Maliki to investigate. We know that Iraq, as the puppet to the Tehran regime, was complicit in these attacks. Let's make sure that the United Nations and the United States are not complicit anymore in the denial of human rights, in the murder of innocent refugees, and in the continued subjugation of all Iranians who live under a tyrannical, fascist, fundamentalist regime that is calling for an end to the civilized world with its construction of a nuclear weapon. Isn't it time that we put a stop to all of this? Thank you very much.